Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we're talking about two things in primary. First, we're talking about COVID-19 and what causes COVID to spread to different parts of the world and why some countries seem to be worsely affected by the virus compared to others. Then after that, we're gonna talk about reservedness and the advantages of reservedness. But before I get started with this video, let me first tell you, I am shooting this video from my new office. So yes, it happened. I moved out of my studio. I finally have an apartment where I can feel comfortable with my own office, more space, more room to cook, to live, to breathe, to create. So I'm so happy with that. Anyways, let's get back on track. COVID-19. What we've seen so far is some cities, some countries, some regions seem worsely affected by COVID-19. And so far, I've not seen a lot of speculation into what, why that is. So first we saw the virus spreading into northern Italy. Then we saw it spreading to places like the UK, to, for example, Amsterdam, the Netherlands. We saw it spreading to France. We saw it spreading to... Uh, for spreading heavily to Spain. Uh, we saw it really taking off in New York, causing New York, Spain and Italy to be some of the worst hit regions of the virus. So why did the virus hit these regions? I believe I have a theory, and I say this theory not as a health expert, but as the person who has studied personality psychology for a long time and a person who has been involved with politics. We can see that some countries have a higher amount of not just densely populated people, but also a densely populated region of extroverts that are not just extroverted, but also high on openness and countries that are probably also quite agreeable. So the virus has spread to countries that are relatively open to new people, tourism and interaction. People that meet up based on interests and creative hobbies and people that are open to talk to strangers and people that are friendly to new people, not just on a shallow glance of saying hi from a distance, but from actually interacting with touching another person and being close to another person. So it appears that countries that are high on extroversion and high on openness are more susceptible to at least the first waves of the virus. Of course, we cannot speak for how the virus will develop over time, but we can say that the first waves of the virus have appeared to have affected highly extroverted areas like New York to a higher extent than what they have affected areas like highly reserved countries, highly introverted countries like Finland. So Finland and Eastern Europe all seem to be countries that are quite well off. In part, of course, this can be explained away by the fact that people live quite far apart. But not only do they live quite far apart, they also tend to avoid interactions with other people. Now, I'm not here to say introverts are, uh, sorry, Finnish people are completely shut off. Finnish people hang out with and interact with other people as well. But who do they hang out with? Primarily, they hang out with reserved people that tend to keep to a certain clique or a certain group. So Finnish people will focus on hanging out with family or with a few close friends or a close friendship circle. And the people in this circle tend to keep to each others before anyone else. This group is quite intact. Most people in this group only interact with each others and perhaps one or two more other people. Meaning these groups, they become kind of locked to each other. So it's like create a society of chains, individualized chains that don't really interact much with other parts of the world or with other groups outside that clique. So if the virus spreads, 
it's likely to spread to most people in that group. That's what we've seen since the virus came out. We saw that the virus would first uh, go to one person and then it would go to all the family members of that person. And so that's how the virus came to almost double from every person affected. But if the circles are really quite tight, most of the time the virus will spread and maybe it will spread to a whole city or a whole community or a whole small group. But if that group is very reserved and very tight, the virus is not going to spread much outside of that, meaning the virus will be more contained. And so the today's question, the question I'm posing to all of you today is, could it be that introversion and reservedness in particular developed in humanity as a means to limit the spread of disease and foreign bacteria? Could it be that biologically, historically, introversion had a purpose because it would limit the contact and interaction with foreign tribes and groups, tribes and groups that might contain hostile viruses and bacteria? With that said, are these the biological advantages of reservedness or is there more of an advantage to being reserved? Is there something positive to being reserved and critical or traditional or withdrawn? Should we all emulate or seek to live this way? Or is there something, can a balance be achieved between these things? If this theory is correct, and I'm not saying it is because I've not researched this, I've not tested this, I've not done the science, perhaps the future world that we're moving towards will be a more reserved world as a whole. Perhaps that is what we're gaining for because now we're talking, all politicians are talking about the new 1.5 or 2 meter society, you know, the new society where we have to work and live and go about our normal days as normally as possible without causing a massive or fast or uncontrollable spread of the virus. So if this is the case, is the future that we work and live in tight knit groups and that we all keep to these groups. I am saying this also because at my workplace and at many workplaces we're seeing now a division into teams. Groups, big workplaces are being grouped into A and B teams or perhaps C or D teams causing it to mean that we have groups that will only interact with one another and not with other groups. Teams of co-workers that are selected because they will work far apart from each other and because they won't interact with people from the other teams. Anyways, that's my theory, that's my flow type theory. Thanks for watching this video and let me know what you think in the comments down below.